How's it going lads and lasses? Today we've got the latest installment in McFarlane's Doom line. This is the Doom guy, which is stylized off of his original appearance in Doom 1, as featured in Doom Eternal as an alternate skin. So this was a McFarlane exclusive. It was exclusive to their web store, and it just came out. Let's take a look at the articulation before I get into anything else. So starting with the neck here, this... Just like the other Doom figures, this has a really nice range of motion there. I believe this is also double jointed, so there's one probably actually into the neck, and then there's one that goes into the base of the head there, which is really... It's, and what I like about this, though, is it actually has a neck, unlike the Doom Slayer figures where it's just the peg. Um, you get a really smooth swivel at the shoulder there. It does do a little bit of twisting because it's on a ball joint, I'm pretty sure. You know, you can get a full 360 out of that. Shoulder pads inhibit it a little bit, but not too much. Um, it has a better bicep swivel than the Doom Slayer, not by much. But, the bicep right there is just a flap. If you really wanted to, you could trim it down, and you'd get a better range of motion out of that elbow. Which I think that's what I'm going to do. But if that doesn't bother you at all, just take a look at the sculpt there. Look at how seamless that is. They did a really good job on the sculpt for that, for that elbow area. You know, having the bicep lead into it. It's probably some of the best, just seamless elbow articulation that I've seen. So kudos to them for that. And swivels back and forth at the wrist, and then you get a full 360 rotation, fairly smooth. Um, you get a really nice ab crunch, it's you know double jointed too, so you have the upper ab and then where the ab joins the hips, so you get a really good range there. Legs kick out pretty far. And I don't know how well you can see there, but it's got a peg that goes in there, and then one that goes in that way, so you can do some rotation right there at the hip. Knee articulation isn't anything to write home about, but it's not terrible. And then it actually rotates at the shin, and it has to, because they did improve the feet on this one, like they can actually swivel back and forth and they kind of have that Marvel Legends style pivot where it pivots at an angle but it doesn't rotate so instead that rotation is all at the shin there which it, it, it works but it looks a little awkward but I will say that it is better than what the Doom Slayer has and of course we have a shoulder cannon which it's just the same as the Doom Slayer you have the ball joint here which allows it to rotate, and then one point here, going up and down, and then a ball joint where the cannon meets the arm. They still haven't added anything that allows you to sort of swivel the cannon back into place. Um, put that back on. It does pop off, so let's get into the accessories now. Now the accessories, of course, is where this figure lacks. You only get a couple, just like with the other Doom Slayer variants. You get the super shotgun. You get the wrist blade thing. And then I already showed you the shoulder cannon. Um, and that, uh, you, you also get the little disc stand. But it's, you know... Standard with every McFarlane figure. It's the same thing. It's just a little simple disc with the logo on it. If you've gotten any of the other Doom figures, you already have it. It's nothing special. I don't even keep them anymore. So, um... So what do I think about this figure overall? I'm actually really happy with this one. The articulation is so smooth. The reason why I collect action figures, as opposed to things like statues or, or vinyl figures or crap like that, is the posability. I like being able to make my own poses and stand them the way I want to. It adds a layer of fun 
to the collection. And so that's something that I kind of judge action figures off of is the level of fun that they have because that's, you know, ultimately that's what they are designed for is to have fun with it, to, to, you know, for kids to play with. But even for, for us adult collectors, it's about having fun making the poses and creating a moment that we liked from either the game or the movie or the TV show. So articulation is very important to me. And it's not just how much articulation it has, it's how fun is it to actually move and pose the figure. Do I like picking it up and making all these different poses with it? Or is it kind of a pain in the ass and it doesn't really stay in a pose or the joints are too stiff or there's just not enough joints? This figure hits a pretty good balance. There's still ways that it could improve the articulation, like with the elbows, with the feet. But for the most part, this is some of the best articulation that I've seen out of McFarlane's newest line. They've definitely been improving, which is something that I'm happy about. Because when they first started doing the 7-inch scale figures, they moved up from their 5-inch scale ones. They kind of went back to their old ways where they were statues, and that was McFarlane's policy. I've talked about that before, where, their, where his policy was, Oh, I want it to just be a moment from the movie or from the game. Well, that's not an action figure, Todd. That's a statue. But they're really improving. Where, where they really need to improve now, though, is with accessories, because they're really falling behind, especially with the Doom license. Every Doom Slayer comes with the same accessories. You'll get the super shotgun, the wrist blade, and the plasma... Not the plasma caster. The shoulder cannon, which is the rip-off plasma caster. They could at least start incorporating... The different guns. The Doom Slayer has this wide arsenal of guns that I would love to see brought into the action figure format. We are getting the Crucible Sword with uh, the QuakeCon variant coming out. I think that comes out in October. So at least they're starting to, to do something different with it. I hope that will continue and I hope that they'll use this mold now that they have it to make the other three variants, the red one, the yellow one, and the gray one. I guess technically it's indigo, but in game it looks gray. Because I don't want to paint those myself. I will if I have to, but I'd rather they just do it. So, overall, this is a figure I would recommend. Even if you've gotten all of the other Doom Slayer figures. The accessories are the same, but the figure is different. It's a totally different mold. Nothing's reused in that department. The articulation is so much better. It feels so much better to pose this figure. Those Doom Slayers were so stiff. And that's because they're kind of in that early transition period of where McFarlane was stopping to do the statuesque figures. And they were starting to add decent articulation. So it has decent articulation, but you can't do a lot of poses with it. Like I said, it's really stiff. It doesn't have a lot of articulation. The armor gets in the way. That's not really the case with this one. But this one, it's just... It's fun to, to hold it and to pose it. You can even, with a little bit of work, get him to hold the super shotgun with both hands. The issue there is the hands are really stiff plastic, so you do have to kind of work to, to get that left hand to, to grip the shotgun. You even have to work a little bit to get the right hand to grip the shotgun. But uh, it's possible. With the other Doom Slayer, you had to do some heavy modification to get that to happen. I'm really happy with this. I hope that they'll continue to improve on their Doom Slayer line. I hope that they don't drop it like they've dropped so many other lines. I want them to do some more demons. I'm happy with that they've done the Marauder, but I'd love to see some other ones like a Kako demon, or um, my favorite is the Revenant. That's what I'd really love to see. I know that the issue with that is they have to consider when they create a new figure, are they going to be able to reuse the tooling and the, and the molds for it? to save on costs later down the line. So that's probably why we haven't seen other demons yet. But I'm hoping that um, we'll at least see a Revenant. You know, some of the iconic ones, the Revenant, the Hell Knight, the Kako Demon, stuff like that. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll leave some links where you can buy this figure off of their website in the description. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time.